Question 4.1 consists of two measurement questions and one maps and plan question that were designed to assist your understanding of road maps. You're given a scenario where the Johnson family plans a trip to the Golden Gate National Park in the Free State. The family arrived at the Bram Fisher International Airport in Bloemfontein. They hired a car and drove to the Golden Gate National Park. A map of the journey is found in Annexure C. In question 411, you are instructed to write down one national road that they traveled on when they traveled via Senegal. On the route map in Annexure C, there are two national roads that they traveled on when they traveled via Senegal. That is the N1 and N5. Either one of these roads are acceptable answers. In question 412, it is stated that the journey takes 3 hours and 13 minutes. They booked at the Glen Renan Rest Camp at the Golden Gate National Park. They arrived at their accommodation at 5 past 1 in the afternoon. You are instructed to determine the time they left the airport. If you look at the map in Annex C, you will see that it takes them 3 hours and 13 minutes to get from the airport to the campsite. They got to the campsite at 5 past 1 in the afternoon. So to find out when they left the airport, we need to go back in time from when they arrived. If we subtract 3 hours and 13 minutes they spent on the road from the time they arrived at the campsite at 5 past 1 in the afternoon, we will get the time that they left the airport at about 8 minutes to 10 in the morning or 9.52. In question 413, it is stated that the family travels at an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour. You will have to calculate the distance to the nearest kilometer from the airport to the Glen Renan camp. You may use the formula speed equals distance divided by time. From the equation given, speed equals distance divided by time, we can rearrange this equation so that distance is the subject of the formula. So mathematically, if we rearrange this equation, we will have an equation where distance equals speed multiplied by time. We have to make distance the subject of the formula because we are asked to calculate distance. It is important to note that we are given the speed of 100 km per hour and we are given the time from the airport to the campsite as 3 hours and 13 minutes. In this equation, we will have to determine the distance in kilometers. We are given the speed in the unit of kilometers per hour. So we have to convert the time from 3 hours and 13 minutes to hours only. We know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, so 3 hours and 13 minutes will be 3 hours plus 13 minutes divided by 60 minutes in an hour. So substituting these values into the distance equation, we will have the equation of distance equals speed of 100 km per hour multiplied by 3 hours plus 13 minutes over 60 minutes per hour. Now simplifying the part in brackets will give you a speed of 100 km per hour multiplied by 3,22 hours. This equation then simplifies further to a distance of 321,67 km. Now rounding this answer to the nearest kilometer will give you a distance from the airport to the Glen Renan campsite of 322 km. Question 4.2 consists of three measurement questions and one maps and plan question that were designed to assess your understanding of surface area of a cylinder and areas of rectangles and circles. It also assesses your ability to convert from the imperial to metric system of measurement. You are given the floor plan of the Rondavels at the Golden Gate National Park in Annexure D. The height of the outside walls is given as 2,5 meters. The area of the door is given as 3,6384 square meters and the area of all the windows is 3,24 square meters. In these questions you may use the following formulae. The surface area of part of a cylinder equals pi multiplied by the diameter of the cylinder multiplied by the height where pi is 3,142. You are also given that the area of a rectangle equals the length multiplied by the breadth and the area of a circle equals pi multiplied by the radius squared, 
where pi is 3,142. Additionally, you are given a conversion table that includes the conversion factors between inches and centimeters and feet and inches. In question 421, you have to write down the name of the type of room when entering the Rondavo. From the floor plan of the Rondavo in Annex D, we see that the type of room when entering the Rondavo can be classified as the living room, the TV room or the kitchen. Any one of these answers are acceptable. In question 422, it is stated that the height of the interior walls is 2,1 meters. The wall marked A1 and A2 dimensions are given in millimeters. These walls need a new wallpaper. You are instructed to calculate in square meters the amount of wallpaper needed for these walls. From the floor plan in Annexure D, we see that the wall labeled A1 is given a length of 2250 millimeters. Since the question asks us to provide the answer in square meters, we will have to convert this dimension from millimeters to meters. Now we know that there are 1000 millimeters in 1 meter. So 2250 millimeters equals 2250 divided by 1000 millimeters in a meter. And this gives us a length for the wall labeled A1 as 2,25 meters. Also given on the floor plan in Annex D, the length of the wall labeled A2 is given as 1800 millimeters. We are going to also have to convert this dimension from millimeters to meters. We know that there are 1000 millimeters in 1 meter, so 1800 millimeters equals 1800 divided by 1000 millimeters per meter. And this equals a length of the wall of A2 as 1,8 meters. Now from question 422, we are given the height of the interior walls as 2,1 meters. And using the formula for area of a rectangle given in the information of question 4.2, the area of the rectangular wall will equal the length multiplied by the breadth of the wall. We can calculate the area of the wallpaper in square meters for both of these walls as the height of the wall of 2,1 meter multiplied by the length of the wall of A1 of 2,25 meters plus the height of the wall of A2 of 2,1 meters multiplied by the length of the wall of A2 of 1,8 meters. This equation then simplifies to 4,725 meters plus 3,78 meters. And this simplifies to an area of wallpaper in square meters that is needed of 8,505 square meters. In question 423, it is stated that the diameter of the rondavo is given as 30 feet. You will have to show that the length of the diameter to the nearest meter is 9 meters. In this question, we have to prove that 30 feet equals approximately 9 meters. You should notice that feet is a unit of measurement in the imperial system, while meters is a unit of measurement in the metric system. So we are going to have to convert this value of 30 feet to a value in meters. From the conversion table, we see that we are given a conversion factor from inches to centimeters and feet to inches. So we are not given a conversion factor from feet directly to meters. So we are going to have to first convert the feet to inches and then we are going to have to convert the value of inches to centimeters and then we have to convert that value from centimeters to meters. So from the conversion table we see that 1 feet equals 12 inches. So 30 feet will equal 30 multiplied by 12 inches per 1 feet and this will give us a diameter of 360 inches. From the conversion table, we see that 1 inch equals 2,54 centimeters. So 360 inches equals 360 multiplied by 2,54 centimeters per inch. And this equals a diameter of 914,4 centimeters. Next, we are going to have to convert this value of centimeters to meters. We know that there are 100 centimeters in 1 meter. 
So 914,4 centimeters equals 914,4 divided by 100 centimeters per meter. And this equals a diameter of 9,144 meters. Rounding this value of 9,144 meters to the nearest meter will give us a diameter of 9 meters. In question 424, it is stated that the National Park needs to paint the outside walls of seven four-bed rondavels in the camp. You are instructed to calculate the number of 20 litre tins of paint that must be purchased. There is a note that says that the spread rate of the paint is 5 litres per 16 square metres. In order to calculate the number of 20 litre tons of paint that must be purchased, we have to first calculate the total area of the outside wall of one rondavel. Then we're going to have to subtract the area of all the windows and the door of the rondavel from the total area that was calculated of the outside wall of the rondavel. The reason we have to do this is because we are not going to paint the windows and the door of the rondavel, just the outside wall. Once we have determined the total area of the outside walls of the rondavel, excluding the door and the windows, we will now have to multiply that area by the total number of rondavels that need to be painted, which is 7. From there, we can determine the amount of paint that is needed to paint the 7 rondavels by using the given information of the spread rate of paint, which was 5 liters per 16 square meters. And then once we have determined the amount of paint that is needed, we can then determine the number of 20 litre tons of paint that must be purchased to paint the seven rondavels. In order to calculate the total area of the outside walls of the rondavel to be painted, we are going to use the following formula given to us in the context, which is the surface area of a part of a cylinder equals pi, multiplied by the diameter, multiplied by the height of the cylinder, where pi is 3,142. So the area of one rondavel will be equal to pi of 3,142 multiplied by the diameter of the rondavel which was calculated in question 423 as 9,144 meters multiplied by the height of the outside wall of the rondavel of 2,5 meters and this equals a total surface area of the outside wall of one rondavel as 71,82612 square meters. Next, we're going to have to calculate the area of the rondavel that needs to be painted. This will be the difference between the total surface area of one rondavel of 71,82612 square meters minus the area of the door and the windows. This will equal 71,82612 square meters minus the area of the door of 3,6384 square meters minus the area of all the windows of 3,24 square meters and this equals an area to be painted of 64,94772 square meters. Now that we have determined the total area of the outside wall of one rondavel that needs to be painted, we can multiply that by the number of rondavels that needs to be painted of 7. So the surface area of 7 rondavels to be painted will be equal to the area of 1 rondavel of 64,94772 square meters multiplied by 7. And this gives us a total area of 7 rondavels to be painted of 454,63404 square meters. Now from the information given in question 424, we are given the spread rate of the paint of 5 liters per 16 square meters. This means that for every 16 square meters of area that is painted, we will be using 5 liters of paint. Now the number of 5 liters of paint needed to paint the 7 rondavels will be the total area of the 7 rondavels to be painted of 454,63404 square meters divided by 16 square meters and this equals 28,4146275 liter paint. Now the number of 5 liters in 20 liters of paint is 20 liters divided by 5 and that equals 4. This means that there will be 4 5 liters in a 20 liter tin of paint. So the number of 20 liter tins of paint needed will be 28,8146275 divided by 4 and this equals 7,10365 20 litre paint. 
since we can't buy 7,10365 20 liters of paint, we have to round this number up to 8 20 liter tons of paint. The reason why we round up and not down is because if we round down, we will not have enough paint to paint the 7 rondavels. But if we round up to 8, we will have enough paint and some left over, but that's okay. So the total number of 20 litre tons of paint needed to paint the 7 rondavels will be 8. Question 4.3 consists of two maps and plans question and one measurement question that were designed to assess your understanding of elevation maps. You are given a scenario where it stated that the Johnson family enjoy hiking and plan to hike the Reebok hiking trail. You are given an elevation map that shows the elevation above sea level and the distance along the hiking trail. The total distance of the hiking trail is 27 kilometers and the total duration of the hike is 2 days. The keys to the flag are given as flag 1 is the start at the Glen Rhenan rest camp. 2 will be the Wolgenworf Environmental Education Center. 3 will be the Western Entrance. 4 will be the Reebok Overnight Hut. Note here that the name Overnight Hut suggests that the first day of the hike will end at this point and the start of the second day of the hike will start at this point. 5 will be the Natural Rock Pool. 6 will be the Generalskop View. And 7 will be the Glen Rhenan Rest Camp. In question 431, you are instructed to write down the flag number of the flag where the height of the hiking trail is 2 kilometers from sea level. Using a ruler, we can see that the flag that is the closest to 2 kilometers above sea level would be flag 5. Here the height is given in meters of 2,000 meters, but we know that there are 1,000 meters in 1 kilometer. So 2,000 meters equals 2,000 divided by 1,000 and this equals 2 kilometers. So flag 5 will be the flag where the height of the hiking trail is 2 kilometers above sea level. In question 432, it is stated that the difference between the highest point and the end point is 645 meters and the elevation of Generalskop view is 2,570 meters. You are instructed to determine the height above sea level of the end point. The height above sea level of the end point will be the elevation of Generalskop view of 2,570 meters minus 645 meters and this equals an elevation of the end point above sea level of 1,925 meters. In question 433, the hiking guidebook states that the second day of the Reebok trail hike is the more challenging of the two-day hike. You will have to explain why this advice is given by referring to the elevation map. From the elevation map, we see that there is a steep upward climb for the first half of the second day of the hike and there is a steep downward gradient for the second half of the second day of the hike. Also, for the first day, there are short up and down gradients and a flat hike, which is easier. So, any one of these explanations are accepted as the correct answer. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. And you can check out this video next.